been asked to present a lesson on moving away from flat figures in geometry. Rectangle. rectangle. Very good. Rectangle. Best name for this. We don't know anything about triangle. what matches. Triangle. triangle. Very good. Three sides. This is pretty easy. Circle. Circle. But all of them are flat. No matter how difficult they are to recognize, they're all flat. And that's what they have in common. We already studied these in geometry. Big long word. No. Rhombus. No. no. If they're not necessarily... It starts with a P. Pair. 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 Parallelogram. It's a hard one to say. You know what? I like rhombus because I know you know what a rhombus is, but I want to tell you the difference is I don't know that all four of the sides are the same, so this is a parallelogram. I put these little arrows on here to guarantee you that those are parallel. This little guy is parallel to this. Y'all tried to say this a minute ago. Trapezoid. Trapezoid. You got these. Trapezoid. <laughs> and then our most frequent flyer, probably our favorite, is a square. Okay. What we're going to do today, y'all, is move away from these flat figures, measuring them, calling them by name, and move into figures that are no longer flat. If they're not flat, they come up off the ground. We come up off the ground. These, y'all, all of these, we call two-dimensional. That's a big word, two-dimensional. When I forget about the flat ones and go to the ones that come up off the ground and width, they also have height. So these guys come up off the ground, okay? The first thing I'd like to ask for a volunteer to do is to bring those 3D shapes to your desk. Will you do that? and put them into two families, just however you feel they fit together. Tell me, why did you put these guys in the same family? I'm not sure of what word to use, but I can tell that you're on the right track because she can trace around the top because it has sides, right? And this one has sides, and this one has sides. So why wouldn't those guys go with them? They don't have sides on the top, okay? Can you, there's one family member that's been, that's missing his family because he's in the wrong family. Can you turn one of them, pick it up, and set it another way so that it does have sides? Try it with those. Do you see that? Okay, put him with the right family now. Okay, see if you can turn those guys to where they would have sides on the top. Top. Point. point. Good word. These two come to a point at the top, and these don't. Well, I'm going to give you names for those um, families. The ones that set, sit down and come to a point, their names are pyramids. Have you ever heard of pyramids in history class and stuff? So they're called pyramids. And the family of the good, the other ones are called prisms. Is a prism, no matter if he's floating in the air, doing a dance, no matter if he's sitting on his rectangle, no matter if he's sitting on his triangle, no matter if he falls down and hurts himself, he is still in what family, y'all? Prism. Prism. Even if I set it this way, I still have to realize that he doesn't come to a point the way those guys do. And we never want to set our three-dimensional pictures, or whatever these are, shapes, down so that they come to a line segment on the top. That's why I ask her to refigure it. Images at this time. They're going to help us understand the parts of these three-dimensional items. Before the computer image, I want to show you something I made just right before we came to illustrate three words that tell you the parts of any three-dimensional. Okay, that's a big word, three-dimensional. Three-dimensional means they're not what? Flat. flat. Okay. This desk holds the flat two-dimensional things. That desk holds the not flat what? Three-dimensional three things. There's two families, prisms and what else? Pyramids. Pyramids. But no matter what family they're in, y'all, they have parts that we have to learn how to say by the right words. And so I'm going to put these parts out here like it was a build your own model set that I got at a craft store. And I'm going to give names to these. And even though how they play their part when this guy gets built, right now they're just parts and they're just kind of hanging out there but I want to show you how it all comes together to build this okay first thing I want you to realize is whenever the line segments the bones I'm gonna call these the bones you know how if we stripped away all of our guts and skin and everything we'd have bones under there this is the bones of this pyramid 
where these line segments meet would be a point. And I know that's silly to these sticks. We call it a vertex. Do you remember that word from angles? It's called a vertex, okay? Um, so when I build this model, the points are called vertices. That's a plural, more than one. Vertices are the points where the corners of this, okay? The sticks, which are the bones, which build the skeleton of this, the sticks are called edges, edges, E-D-G-E-S, edges. And these two guys, known as pyramids, have two tests they have to pass so that I know for sure they're a pyramid. One of them y'all discovered beautifully. When they sit on their base, they come to a what? Point. Point. The other thing is real important. And do y'all know what a Lego is? Did y'all ever play Legos? Okay, let's just do this. Do you know what miniature means? Little tiny? If you were a little tiny person about that tall, okay, can you imagine that for a minute? Honey, I shrunk the kids. Little tiny person that tall. And you were walking around looking at this thing like we would in Egypt if we were looking at the pyramids. If I was walking around looking at this and I was standing there right here, what would I see? A face. Okay, good. It's a face in what shape? Triangle. Triangle. Okay, so I keep walking. What do I see now? Triangle. Triangle. Keep walking. What do I see now? Triangle. Okay, this is two tests. When it sits on its base, it has to come to a what? Point. Point. And when miniature men walk around a pyramid, everywhere they go, they see what? The same, the same face of what shape? Triangle. Triangles. Very good. The test for prisms is different. The test for prisms says when you set it on its base, and you go looking up, you're not gonna see a point. You're gonna see a twin. What does twin mean? They match, they're very good. They match perfect. So this looks just like that, doesn't it? So when it's sitting on its base and it looks up, it sees something just like it. In geometry, we call that congruent. Do you remember that term from this year? So you've got two congruent bases. And this time when the little man walks around it and he starts looking, what's he going to see? Rectangle. Rectangles. Okay, I'm going to walk around and make sure. Do I see rectangles everywhere? Mm -hmm. That's the other test. The test is when you set them on their base, they have to have a matching twin above them. And when the little man walks around it, all he's allowed to see is what? The same shape. The same thing, but in this case, particularly what? Rectangles. rectangles. In the case of a pure... I want you to just look at this guy that's kind of floating around in air. And no one has set him down, but I want you to use your imagination and what we've talked about and tell me what is that? Triangle pyramid. Pyramid? Does it come to a point when it sits down? I wish I could stop it. No. 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 You it's know, a prism. It's a prism, isn't it? What would be the shape of his base so that the little man would see rectangles on the walls? Square. Square. No. Rectangle. rectangle. Uh, triangle. 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 This is a tough one. Y'all, this one's going to be, I, I can't stop it. it. It's one thing about this computer program I hate. I can't stop it, but y'all, if he was sitting on this triangle, do you see the walls? What shape are they? Rectangles. Another, they're all rectangles. Is that what we want? Mm -hmm. And if, yeah. Yes. So if he's sitting on the triangle, what's above him? A triangle. Another triangle. Isn't that what I was telling you about these? If he sits on a shape, he has to have another one just like it here. Does that come true here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to look over here. This is the thing flattened out. They unfolded it like a box that hadn't been formed yet. How many triangles are there here? Two. 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 Those are the b b bases. bases. And that's what he would need to sit on so that the little man walked around and saw the three what's? Three, 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 three rectangles. Okay, this is hard. It's like you have to picture something that's not right there in front of you. These are much easier because we can hold them and set them down and all that good stuff. We have to be able to take however they try to draw it and picture the things we need to picture. When they drop down all the sides and make it flat before they fold it back up and turn it into the figure, it's called a net. Okay. I'm going to highlight the, the parts that we talked about. The faces are now green. Faces, how many would there be? It says right here. Five. five. Two what's? Bases. Bases that are in the shape of a triangle. triangle. Very good. And three lateral faces that are in the shape of what? For a total of one, two, three, four, five faces. 
Uh, Miss Serta had something the other day that I thought was good. What did you say to help you remember that these two are included in the faces? It would rhyme. Do you remember? Look at me. Uh, I'm putting faces, on the spot. Bases are faces. Bases are faces. It's a rhyme. <laughs> so these two triangles serve as the bases, but they're also what? Faces. Faces. Very good. So what's the total of faces here? Five. Five. Over here you can think of it as two of these triangles that serve as the bases and the three rectangles that wrap around it. Okay. Vertices. Do you see the little green dots? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So the vertices are the corners, the points, like my little pink dots I had. And then the last word was what? Edges. Edges. See how they highlight them in. Now let's see if we could. Do you see how there are nine? Three, three sticks for each triangle, right? Three sticks for each triangle. And then the triangles have to be separated by sticks that stand up. So do, do y'all, do y'all, can y'all count that or no? Is that confusing? Let me see if I dizzy, doesn't it? Huh? Gotta make sure you're trying to count. Um, three, six, seven, like, eight. Eight. it's hard, but. It's a nine? It's nine. Three for this triangle. Now I want to wait for a minute. And then three for that triangle. So we're up to how many? Six. Six. And then it has to stand up one, two, it's back there three times. Does that make sense? So the sticks would be three up here, three down here, and then three that stood up for the skeleton. Does that make sense? How many edges does this have? Edges? One, two, three, four. Edges. Five. How many sticks did I have to use to make it? Six. Five. Six. six. Tell me where you're getting the six. How many down here on the base? Yeah, do y'all see that? Yeah. One, two, three edges there. And each one of them has one coming up to the teepee top. So these three plus the three lateral edges, the ones that are on the corners of the walls, the three lateral edges makes a total of how much, y'all? Plot down there. What are all those shapes? Triangles. Triangles. That's what the little miniature man sees when he walks around. Okay. Um, will you shift that back to the? I'm gonna. We're gonna give you now your own um, shape, three-dimensional shape that we want you to actually cut out and use tape to create. But I want to ask you first of all. Right now, is this flat? Mm -hmm. Right now, is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. And right now, in its flat form, we call this a net, N-E-T. -E when you guys cut it out and use the tabs and create your own prism or pyramid, by the way, can anybody tell what this is going to be now? It's a square oh, got someone pyramid. That sees it. She said one of these green ones. Help her with a better word for that. Uh, what family? Comes to a point. Pyramid. 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 He's in the pyramid family, but his base is in the shape of a what? Square. Square. Let me tell you how we give our geometric solids their names. Your name is Beatrice, first name. Vargas, second name. His name, his family name is Pyramid. That's his last name. Yeah. His first name is whatever the shape of that base is. So tell me what his name is. Square, Square Pyramid. Exactly. All of our, this guy's name is longer. He, when he was in kindergarten, he had a hard time with it. Hexagonal. What's the shape? Hex, you know how you say that? This is crazy. Hexagonal. Hexagonal prism. Prism. His family name is Prism because he doesn't come to a what? Point. Point. And his, sorry, his um, lateral walls are in the shape of what? So you get the idea of how they get their names. So most shapes get their names. So you might want to guess and see what, you know, what this might be. There's some directions up here. Help each other if anybody has trouble reading them. But read it and follow along with the scissors and tape and just create yours, please.